Michael Robinson now joining us live. <clears throat> Doesn't have the suit on, but he's still bringing the smile. All right, so so here, let me defend, uh, push back on this. Russell Wilson has always been, he's a little Kirk Cousins, very eternally optimistic. There's a Tebow quotient. Now, I thought Tebow was a, you know, a little cheesy for my taste, but I have defended, I have defended Russell saying, listen, this is who he is. He's a little cringy on the internet. Um, but you know him way better than I do. Do you think, and you're not the first to suggest this, that it's a little inauthentic? Well, um, I can't sit here and say that it's a little inauthentic because Russell was has been a positive person since the moment I met him when he first <laughs> walked into the locker room right. with the Seattle Seahawks. But my whole thing and the whole purpose I was trying to, uh, the whole point I was trying to make on, on Total Access with that quote was, you can't be so positive that you're ignorant to reality. Right. And that's basically what I was talking about. And, and yes, being a former teammate of Russell's, I've seen him uh, play great football. And I, a part of me thinks that this marriage between him and, and Nathaniel Hackett just isn't right, right? Nathaniel Hackett was brought in to be an offensive guru. Um, Russell was brought in to, be, to, to, to make this offense more explosive and more exciting. And again, if I'm, a guy in that, if I'm a guy in that locker room, I'm looking at the entire situation, and I'm like, well, what's different than when Drew Locke was here? With, there is no different. Russell got his money. Nathaniel Hackett got his money. But we're still losing. Just they're not getting the results. And so what I was trying to say was I just wanted to see a little bit more fire from my old quarterback, from my old um, playmaker in Russell Wilson, because I know he has the skill set and I know he has the want to to be great. You know, it, it's uh, it, what's really interesting, Michael, and you've been around the league, you know, the Niners Seahawks. So when Brady went to Tampa, he had an experienced coach, pretty darn good offensive line and a number one receiver. When Stafford went to the Rams, he got McVay, a good old line, and Cooper Cup. So when I defended Russell, I said, he's got a coach that's unproven, a terrible old line now that Bowles is out, and a bunch of kids at wide receiver. And my suggestion was, I heard about a year ago, that they were concerned in Denver about the maturity level of some of their young receivers. Is it, when you watch this work out, is it fair for me to suggest that part of this is... He doesn't, like, have a veteran. He doesn't have a Mike Evans. He doesn't have a Cooper Cup. He's got kid receiver. No offense now gone. Is it possible that, you know, in Seattle, he always had a mature Doug Baldwin, Lockett. You know, he always had, like, mature guy. Is that potentially part of the issue? Yeah, I think it is potentially part of the issue, but – when you're paid a half a billion dollars, <laughs> when that's what you're paid to, 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 that's what you're making. And when everybody looked at this roster in the preseason and said, wow, maybe they're just a quarterback away. He was brought here to get this team over the hump. And I think people still have visions of when Peyton Manning came to Denver. And, and I've said this before, there was a difference between Russell and Peyton Manning. When Peyton Manning came to Denver, he was looking for an offense in a situation that had the playmakers, had the front office, and he was sitting the offensive coordinator down and saying, this is what we're running. That's not like that with Russell. Russell had to find an offense that he can step into to accentuate the things that he does well. I just think Nathaniel Hackett would serve himself well by just giving Russell all the tools at the line of scrimmage so that he can run the show himself and just let the veteran leadership, let the veteran experience of Russell Wilson kick in and let Russell go cook. So there's a couple of things. Um, one of the guys that should be up for coach of the year is Pete Carroll. Um, first of all, they had a great draft. Kenneth Walker's a stud out of Michigan State. Both their tackles, they don't have to draft a tackle for seven years. Like those, Cross and Abraham are men. Like those are dudes. So they really hit a draft. Plus, they got an edge kid they like. So, but it's the Geno Smith transformation. And I, I wonder this, Michael. You're a smart guy. You can tell on television. You go to Penn State. You were ready mature wise, maturity wise. You walked into the NFL. You could do multiple things. A lot of guys walk into this league at 21. They are not ready for the money, the fame. And I watched Geno, and I'm like, he was getting into fights with teammates. I'm watching him now. I'm like, that, like that's a real quarterback. Are you shocked by it? Um, if you would have asked me this six months ago, yes, I would have been shocked by it. But I had an opportunity this offseason, Colin, 
to call some of the preseason games for the Seattle Seahawks. So obviously being a former player, being a former, you know, a Seahawk alum, I had access to Geno and being able to sit down with him, talk to him, seeing the growth mentally, seeing the maturity, seeing the fact that the number one thing on his mind was the entire team taking a step. He was willing to sit back and support Drew Locke. He's not stupid. He understood the fact that he was there last year. He understood the fact that he knows the offense, but this team went out and actively sought after Drew Locke. So he understood the situation that he was in. He understood that if he took care of the ball in the preseason and if he took care of the ball during the season, this job could be his based off of the fact that Pete Carroll is a defensive coach. It's one thing Pete told me this offseason that I think continues to resonate. And I'm like, Pete, dude, you got a franchise quarterback that just left out of the door, man. How how do you plan on rebuilding this team? He shut me up, right? They said, Mike, don't you dare say it. This is not a rebuild. As long as we don't turn the football over, we have the athletes, we have the dogs, we have the we have the crowd, we have the coaches, and now we have the motivation. And, and Geno's ball, and he's actually playing better than their old quarterback, Russell Wilson, right now. Saints-Cardinals tonight. You'll be on the NFL game day kickoff at 6 Eastern. Um, I do. I, I've said this earlier. I think the Raiders in Arizona are too talented to not turn it around. It's an offensive league. There's way too many ballers. And I look at Arizona, and I think uh, I've said this before. I didn't love Kyler Murray's offseason, but I'm a total hypocrite because I don't love <laughs> a lot of what Aaron Rodgers says. But I would give him 50 million, so I don't have to love everybody's personality. Baker Mayfield wore me out. Aaron wears me out. Kyler can wear me out. You can play or you can't. But I will say, I don't know what's going on. They're terrible in the red zone. Kingsbury couldn't win in college with Mahomes. If I said to you, Michael, what is wrong? As a former offensive player, tell me, what do you see with Arizona? There's way too much talent to not be able to score. Um, Colin, it's tough for me to say this because I was just telling the producers here at NFL Network, and I played in a bowl game in Florida. And the night before, Cliff Kingsbury played in the bowl game before me. And it's crazy that he's a head coach. I'm on (laughs) on television talking about him. It's crazy. But it's the scheme, Colin. It's the scheme, man. It, It seems to me offensively, the Arizona Cardinals always try to trick you. They always try to, oh, look over here, look over here, but we're going to throw it over here. Oh, like... Sometimes you, this is a physical sport. Sometimes you don't have to be the smartest man in the room. Sometimes this game is just about numbers and angles. I got more guys than you over here, so I'm going to run the football over here. I got angles on you over here, so I'm going to throw the football over here. And when I look at this offense, it just doesn't always seem sound. It doesn't. Yeah. Like, I, I can't, when, I, when I'm looking at the offense, I'm not always sure what Cliff Kingsbury is trying to get accomplished. When I watch Sean McVay, when I watch Kyle Shanahan, when I watch some of these other offensive play callers, I'm like, oh, okay, they're running that play because they're going to set up a play action later. Oh, okay, they're not blocking Michael Parsons because they want to take away some of his aggressiveness. They want him to think a little bit. Oh, I can see what the offensive coordinator is trying to do. When I watch the Arizona Cardinals, hell, I I don't know what they're trying to do, but make Kyler Murray look like a superstar athlete running around and trying to play. That's not sustainable in the national football. By the way, an hour and a half ago, uh, Greg Cosell, who's watched film for 43 years, literally said the exact same thing. He goes, I've been watching this for 43 years. I have no idea what they're trying to do. So he's Michael Robinson. He was a Big Ten Offensive Player of the Year. Quarterback, wide receiver, running back, great broadcaster. Uh, lucky to have him again. Um, just love having you on. You're a super smart guy. You have a different take on stuff. And thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you, Colin. Always, man. Always watching your show, man. Keep rocking. All right. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.